Today in the podcast, we have Rachel Sklar, who we met in Salzburg, the Mozart 100. In 2019, she, she attempted. attempted 12 ultras in 12 countries? In 12 months. In 12 months. So well, we're, we're going to find out how it went. We're going to find out how it went. <laughs> and uh, what does she have plans for next year? That's right. Welcome to the Gotta Run Racing Podcast with your hosts, Norman and Jody. Discover the inspiring stories of the average and not so average runners. And they're off. All right, so welcome to the podcast, Rachel Sklar. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? Doing well. Doing don't lie, well. don't lie. <laughs> Trying to navigate, trying to navigate like everybody, right? It's just day yeah. by day. Yeah, the the joys of 2020. So you were your region was just put back into lockdown, mm -hmm. and it's just before Christmas. Just before Christmas. I mean, it's not a big deal. Like, I mean, I don't go out. I'm a hermit, anyways. I train. I come home. I sleep. I eat. Like, it doesn't make that much of a difference. It was just going to the gym. So. I mean, I've been online all morning looking at equipment and everything. I'm like, I just need to build this gym, get everything set up, and then I don't ever have to worry about it, right? Exactly. I yeah. started doing Pilates again after many years of not doing Pilates, and it was making a huge difference to, you know, old injuries. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I literally joined for, as a membership on March 15th. <laughs> so oh, my gosh. three days later... <laughs> Everything was shut down, and then we were fortunate enough to start up again in September, and now our area is going into red, which means gyms are limited to 10 people, so I don't think oh. my gym's even going to bother. You guys are Orangeville, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we're in orange, and then Monday we go to red, which is what I think you guys were in. We were in red. Now we just, Monday we go into Gray, so we are joining now Peel, Toronto, and was it Windsor, Essex? So, yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just see how we all remember how we met. How did we meet? Do you remember how we met? So we met at Mozart 100. Yes, and we, you guys were. I guess you guys were just like taking videos, taking photos, checking out the scene. And I don't know. I don't know. Did I ask you guys like where you're from or something? And then you're like Ontario. And I'm like, oh, my or Canada. I'm like, oh, my God. Where? And you're like, Ontario. I'm like, oh, my God, me too. Like, I never meet any other Canadians. And it was so funny. It was. I think it was at Packet Pickup. Yeah. 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 And near the front of the stage. And we were taking pictures and such. And, you know, to hear a voice that sounds North American, it. it <laughs> You tweaks your ear, right? And I think yeah. you were preparing to do an interview for Ultra World, Ultra Trail World Tour. Yeah, the the videographer was with me, and he was just filming me throughout there. And yeah, and then I, you guys, I was like, yeah, I don't want to do <laughs> But what you told me earlier was that we missed each other because you came into our store a couple of times there, and you're looking at. Is that true? You came into our, into our running free store in Orangeville, and we weren't yeah. there. We weren't there. Yeah. yeah. I had gone in before, and then I got in after. I'm like, where are they? Because you know? <laughs> <'Cause> you're, <laughs> you were looking at our belt buckles and that in that glass, and you're like, who are these yeah. people? <laughs> I'm like, who are these people? These <laughs> <ultra -marathon runners." laughs> it was very impressive. I was like, damn. <laughs> uh, it was mostly him. Yeah. <laughs> so that was Did cool. Did you enjoy Mozart? We did enjoy Mozart. It was, uh... It was just so hot. My gosh. It was a major heat wave. It, it yeah. was hot. Yeah. And then, I don't know what time you finished, but I finished in that downpour. Just the the final climb, where you're in the city of Salzburg, and you think you're near the finish line, and then they made you climb that crazy hill with all the steps. I was so angry. I think... People was, around me were like, what is wrong with her? <laughs> I, was, I was angry. I was like, when are we going to stop climbing? I just, and then somebody told me, I'm like, how long to the end? They're like 20K. I'm like, what? Because I looked at my watch. I'm like, there's no way it's another 20K. I was like freaking out. And then I went around the bend and up. I was like there. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a good race. It was really hot, though. But it was too bad that we saw we were climbing the stairs at in the dark. Because we didn't get to see 
what oh, Jody the saw. View, yeah, yeah, the view. That's the thing. We were climbing in the dark, and it's like, wow, I didn't see any of that. So. You know what, though? I didn't care about the view. <laughs> I just wanted to get to the finish line. <laughs> Who cares about the view? I'll go look at it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought I thought the race was almost closing. Yes, when I finished because he tore everything down. I was like, "Wow, well, I'm so ahead. like I'm I'm far ahead from like the cutoff." That's like, right. What's going on? I was like, I don't know what time you came in. Thirty but minutes before like, you. Thirty minutes. When you crossed the finish line, I was having a beer in the tent. Okay. okay. <laughs> but let's talk about when did you start becoming a runner? I started running must be seven, seven years ago, eight years ago, but not running to like run marathons. Like I was, a, I used to do Muay Thai. And so mm -hmm. I moved to Thailand and I hated running, like hated running and never understood it. I'm like, I don't understand how these people are jogging outside. Like I hated putting one foot in front of the other. Like I don't get it, but we would have to run every morning. So I, the first day I was there, they're like, we're going for a 5k dying like I was dying I was like Ugh! like out of breath like my knees hurt my back hurt I'm like I can't do this but then those 5k's eventually turned into 10k's and the 10k's turned into 15k's and then I came back to Toronto and I was still training in Muay Thai and every day we'd have to run 10k and yeah then one day I think it was about five years ago four years five years ago I'm like I'm gonna run a marathon and I like <laughs> googled how to write how to run a marathon and I put in the kilometers and I finished, like not gracefully. It took me forever, but I finished. And wow. that was kind of the the start of this whole running thing. Right. And then uh, I think from that point, it was eight months later that I ran my first 100 mile, which wow. I don't understand how I did it because I, I didn't know how to train for it. Like it was in Argentina. It was like 100% self-sufficient. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. It had like 7,000 meters of elevation change. Oh my and gosh. I, like my hill training were these like baby hills in Hyde Park. I'm like, oh yeah, this is great hill training, you know? <laughs> and I mean, God knows how I finished. Like I ran out of food. I didn't, I didn't know anything, right? Like, wow. It was self-sufficient. There was no aid station. Like the water you got was from like streams. Like all I had, I packed like, gels like i was living on gels in an ultra like i had no idea what i was doing but what made you and take that on then I, what made you decide to this is what i'm gonna do it was like it, but it was like the, it was it spoke to my soul like something that i needed to do and it was so inspiring and i just pictured myself in patagonia through like, like the mm. andes on these incredible like ridges i'm like you know that was the first time the mountains really spoke to my soul ah. like, okay this is what i have to do and like i got there and it was like it was incredible. Like the the Andes is just like mind blowing, like, mind blowing. <clears throat> yeah. So. so after that, you come back to Ontario. What were you, what were you thinking? What was going through your mind when you came back to Ontario after experiencing that? I can't think say it. That. <laughs> hmm? Say it. <laughs> Depression. <laughs> well, yes. Okay. So yes. Yeah. So <laughs> after, after that break, no. Okay. So after that. The edema, like I had like cankles for like two weeks. I had like my my feet were so cold that I could not walk. And then it's like you have the high from the ultra. And then I had never experienced that type of low and depression after an ultra. Like I didn't do anything for three weeks. Like I was like I was so proud of myself for finishing, but then I was like in my room like crying. I'm like why why am I crying? I was so <laughs> depressed, right? Yeah, yes. You go from this like the roller coaster of emotions, and then. Uh, yeah, I mean, it took me like a few weeks to emotionally kind of get back to a steady state. And yeah. then Believe me, we understand. <laughs> we understand. The come down is hard. It is hard. Races. It is hard. So let's relive this experience 2019. We're going to go uh, between each race and we're going to talk about each one, the good, the bad, the ugly of each race. Oh, God, there was a lot of bad. <laughs> <laughs> So it all started 2019 in what month? So I started, I guess it was late February and I was in Trans Grand Canaria. Mm, but okay. what happened yep. was the, the, the gentleman who was filming me, I'll know, he had come to Toronto, he was filming me, we were out filming and I slipped, I fell and I hurt my knee and it was all black, like it was black ice. And this is like two weeks before Trans Grand Canaria. I couldn't walk. Okay. I could not walk. I had trained for it. So I was like, 
what am I going to do? So I had gone to physio, like chiropractor. They're like, it's just inflammation under your kneecap. Like you should be okay. I still couldn't run, but I flew there and I'm like, maybe if I ice it, maybe if I'm like, you know, drinking like ginger and like, like greens, it'll like take away the swelling. Anyways, I, I took the star line. I was in pain and I made it to kilometer 80 at kilometer 80 that was at 7500 meters so i had climbed 7500 meters the problem was the rest of the race was descending and i couldn't descend oh, wow. yeah. so i could climb i couldn't descend it's yeah. just the pressure on my knee and like when he was filming me like it was always at the worst like i'm sobbing i'm crying and then there was the the official and he's like you timed out and that was the start of this year oh. it was a dnf i was like oh my i can't believe i'm starting off with a dnf and that was my first ever DNF. So it was like a hard blow for me to start the year like that. Mm. And for my first DNF, like I was just like in bed crying for so like I honestly like last year I was just crying the whole year. <laughs> it was that was a, that was tough. It was an amazing race, and I think that's a race that like I have a bone to pick that I want to go back and finish it because ah. I was so close. Like I had climbed it, I just couldn't descend it. So I mean, eventually I do want to go back and finish it because I know I can do it. Sure. It's just both legs have to be intact. <laughs> so that's race number one. The first one, okay. DNF. That's okay. So that's the ugly. But mm-hmm. the good is the place. The bad is the knee. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Second one. And then it was Istria. Oh, so, I, I would oh, love to go to Istria. Very that, cool. Yeah. Like, huh? That's the oldest start line, I think, on the, on the, on the um, tour, right? It's, it's 3,000 year old, the start line. But it's a small little... The town? The town, I mean. It's a small town that you start from. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's 3,000 year old, I think. Wow. I did some research on that one. Got to go there. Go. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) With that one, I didn't really know what to anticipate. Like, I heard so many good things from people. They're like, oh, it's an amazing experience. And like, just watching the video, I'm like, yeah, it looks okay. Like, I don't know what everyone's talking about. But I was like... It's fine. And I, I connected with a girl on Instagram and she was there. And so we took the star line together and we were together for the first, I would say, 90 kilometers. Wow. And she's like, she's a good runner. She's from Chamonix and she's like this little small thing. And every single time we were at like an aid station, I would like try to sit. She's like, no, Sydney, we only have five minutes. Go, 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 go. I was like, oh my God, okay, okay, okay. And so we blasted through the first half pretty fast. And then my knee started hurting again. And then I'm like, okay, go. I'm going to be too slow. And I was way ahead of the cutoff. I'm like, okay, I have time. I can just take my time. I have like another, you know, 70 K to go. And then I think just because I was going a bit slower, I got hypothermia. Oh. So I got to one of the medic tents and I was a mess. Like I was shaking, like it was freezing cold. Like we had snow on the summit. Like it was completely unexpected for that region. And oh, wow. I was in the medic tent for like five hours. And wow, wow. After, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> I was blue, okay? Like, it was, I was freezing, freezing cold. But I was like, I kept looking at my watch. I'm like, I told them, like, wake me up in an hour. I, and like, it was like a countdown, right? And like, it was the last hour. I'm like, okay, I, I gotta get moving. I gotta go. And my legs had seized because I was lying down. So I'm, I get up, I'm like, oh, God, right? And so it was another 30K to the end. And, like, I had just made the cutoff by maybe an hour. Wow. And, like, I thought, and I was, like, I was I was just, just so happy because it was a miler and it was tough. And I had hypothermia and my knee hurt. And then I was, like, okay, I need, like, five beers after this and just <laughs> chill. But, I, like, history is, it really is magical. It's one of those races, like, like when you're in the midst of the battle, you're, like, why am I, like, I don't understand it. But then in, in retrospect, you're, like, there's something really magical and mm. special about this race and like the organizers the every like it, everything is done so so well and like the race is really it's amazing so so now you know why they were they were all praising it even though it yeah. didn't look that exciting like, <laughs> so the third one you did not do third one i didn't do and then i came home and i was only home for a week week and a half and then i flew to australia oh <laughs> <laughs> so not much time <laughs> Took the start line and I just, I didn't feel well to begin with. I was vomiting on course for like 15, 16 hours. Wow. Um, I'm really, really stubborn. And I was like, 
I couldn't keep anything in, but I kept going, right? So I was really running on fumes the entire time. I was like, okay, like, it's fine. Like, I'm just going to get to an aid station, lie down. Like, the, I think it was, uh, I think I only had maybe 30K left. But, I, like, finally, I'm like, I need to just lie down, try to get food. I was ahead of the cutoff. I'm like, I could take a few hours here. And I'll know the videographer was with me, and he's just looking at me. He's like, you, you need to stop. Like, you know, I'm like, no, no, it's fine. Like, I'm, I'm just going to, like, try to get some bread or potatoes, <laughs> something bland. If I lie down, it, it'll stay down. And then I was like, I, I tried to sleep for about an hour or two, and then I got back up, and then I like I was disoriented. Like, I was mm. a complete like, disaster. And then I left and I started, and I mean, UTA is literally all stairs. So I started going up the stairs and I started vomiting again. And Al knows like, stop, like you need to stop, like put up the white flag. I'm like, no, and I like got all pissed. I'm like, leave, go. And then I was climbing and then I felt something like my, my chest was like, it, it was like tight. Like it was like, I felt like I was going to have a heart attack. Ooh. Right. And I was, I was like, okay, no. So I called him. I'm like, he yeah, had done right like I'm like no 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 that I mean I was vomiting for so long and I really I that was not smart at all um what part of Australia you know, was this it was a blue mountain blue mountains okay oh yeah I finished the race I mean I didn't finish the race I I DNF that one I went to lie down I was like really I thought I would have to be rushed to the hospital like I couldn't like my chest was so tight and like my body was cramping because I had been vomiting so long, like I, my potassium, everything was so low that like my, my body was like this, like I couldn't like, my electrolytes were so out of whack that yeah. it took me a few days just to be able to like loosen up again. But really I was, all I remember was just like throwing up and eating <laughs> ginger chews and like, you know, <laughs> and then we go to Mozart. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, Mozart, great race. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys were there. I finished <laughs> that one. Um, and then I had two weeks. Then it was Lavaredo. So oh, it's the theme of I'm finishing every other one. So right. we get to Lavaredo, okay? It was super hot. That was when, like, so it was even hotter than in Mozart. Cortina is beautiful. It was, like... It was picturesque and I had like a great recovery off and like training through the Alps and everything. So Lavaredo started, it was fine. We got stuck on a passage. We all got heat stroke <laughs> and then I don't, but I don't actually think I was recovered enough for Mozart because I was only two weeks after Mozart. Right. So really like I was really tired. Like on my first climb in Lavaredo, I was already tired. Like my legs were tired. My glutes were tired. I'm like, this is going to be tough. Yeah, and I, I think it was from the heat or something. I, I really, I didn't feel well at all towards the end. Like I was getting like vertigo. Mm -hmm. So um, I went to the medic tent. I'm like, I just need to lie down for like 20 minutes. Like I'm fine. Like I just, I'm kind of dizzy right now. Maybe my my blood sugar is low. And they're like, okay. And then they checked my oxygen saturation. It was at 80. Ooh. They're like, you're done. Or calling your race, they're like, your oxygen is at 80, it should be at 90, 95, or 95 to 99. Yeah. I put up the biggest seat. I'm like, no, I'm fine. I have 17K to the end. I'm like, just give me one hour. Let me finish this race. They're like, your oxygen is at 80. <laughs> they're like, you're done. I was like fighting tooth and nail. They're like pushing me onto the bus to go back to the start line. Like, I was pissed. I was really pissed about that, but I'm like, okay, okay whatever. Okay. So that was Labyrinth. Oh. Then I had two weeks before Iger. Oh. So I was, so I had still run a hundred kilometers of Lavaretto. Like, so, I mean, I was, I still put in all these kilometers. So, I mean, I was really tired. That was like the three Alps races. It was Mozart to Lavaretto to Iger. Mm. Got to Iger. By the time I got to Iger, mentally, I was like, I was exhausted. Like, I'm like, how am I taking another start line? Like, I just didn't, I didn't even really want to be there, but I was yeah. like, I mean, I'm in Brindlewold, like, it's beautiful, I'm going to try my best. Took the start line, Iger is bloody tough, because <laughs> it's 50k up, down, and then, like, the 50k go off, and they finish, and then you get to, like, the main checkpoint, and then you have, an, like, a thousand meter climb, and you're just like, why, Iger, why? <laughs> I finished Iger and it was amazing. It was wow. Super, 
super, super tough. Like that's when great. They say, like, yeah, it, it was, I mean, it's all like, it's Alpine. Like it's just like Lavaredo. It's just, I mean, a lot of it you can run some of it. You can't like, it's just so much steep climbing descent. Yeah. And then after I grew, I was like, okay, it was like three months, uh, three races in a month and a half. Like I just mm. needed to chill and not do anything, not think about running. So I went back to Italy and I just kind of recuperated there or took time off. And then finally I flew home. Um, and then it was Harikana. Mm. And I don't think that should be I, easy I, <laughs> compared to know, the Alps. <laughs> no, you know what? Like I, I think I was really tired after that whole thing. Cause really I had a month off in between. It was like a month. And I, after I heard, I had no desire to take a start line. Like at that point, yeah. I really started to, that was the beginning of me breaking mentally mm. and emotionally. And when I got to Quebec, I was like, there was like no excitement. Like I just mm. didn't want to race. And like, I was like, I'm on home turf, you know, like I should want to be doing in Harikana, like this is exciting. We're in Canada, like we're filming in Canada, and I didn't finish Harikana. And it was raining that day, or something, or all day, or something. It was weird with Harikana because I definitely like the group I was with. Like we were not the last ones before cutoff. Like I remember passing people and passing people and passing people, but then eventually there was like a group of like ten of us who were kind of like in this race block, and we were always together and we see the truck closing behind us and we're like how are we the last one so everybody else had timed out i think it was i mean it was snowing it was september like wow. it was just it, at Raikana, as although it, it's like 4400 meters it really is a tough tough race i've heard it's like, technical it's technical trail it's very technical yeah. and the winner of Harikana was like that was tougher than Trans Grand Canaria. Wow. Like, wow. Just because, like, you guys know, just from, like, running on the Bruce, like, just, like, with roots and rocks and everything, you're always picking up your feet, like, double the amount of time. But in that region of Quebec, it was just, there's so many roots and rocks, you're really having to pick up your feet mm. even oh, more. Wow. And it, it's, so, although the the elevation isn't super high, it's it's still super, super, super tough. Yeah. Do you Huh? Yeah. I think I know it's after Haikana. Cappadocia? Cappadocia. Yes. Was it? <laughs> that sounds like the the best one. Well. <laughs> well, Cappadocia at that point that was when I broke. Like <laughs> me, like that was that was the breaking point for me was Cappadocia. Like before going into Iger, I was like you know, I was emotional, but going into Cappadocia, like, I was a shell of myself. Like, it was, I, I didn't even know what to do. Like, I know was with me, the videographer, and I was crying. Like, I, like, I can't take another start line. What am I doing? Like, why am I here? Like, it was just, it was too much, right? And after a while, you start to lose yourself, like, putting yourself on the start line every single month. And if you're not taking that necessary time off, mm -hmm. that happens. And I just remember, like, prior to the race, like, we're, like, packing up our things and, like, we're, we're dropping them. And, like, one of the photographer comes up to me and he's like, what's wrong with you? Like, you look like, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, just go, go, go. And, like, I took the start line. Everybody's so excited. And, like, Cappadocia was, like, my dream race. Like, I was, like, so excited to be there. And, like, I was formulating the year around this one race. Mm. Like, it's just it's beautiful it's breathtaking and i took the start line and everybody's like screaming and excited and i'm just like <laughs> i was like not a race here we go yeah. and it was it's a good race like a lot of it like the first half is pretty flat and then it's three big climbs and then you finish but i mean for that one the only way for me to finish was just like eight station to eight station to eight mm -hmm. station and like i had to just like it was like okay 10 more cage the next next one great reset 12k to the next one break reset and that was the only way for me to finish and i finished the pro like the finish line i was like no yeah. expression <laughs> nothing i was like i really need to like tone it down like i need to step back and like find myself again and so after after cappadocia i came back i was in serious depression for like two months like it took mm. me a long time to just you know find yeah. my voice find myself 
And then I was supposed to restart. Um, I was supposed to finish that year with, um, so in 2020, so this year I was supposed to do Transgrand Canaria and then finish with HK100, mm. or sorry, HK100 to Transgrand Canaria. Right. But so it would have been like a whole year. So from the time I started, so right. I was going to rest, I was going to redo Transgrand Canaria as like the last race. But um, for January, there was all the political riots in Hong mm, Kong. Right. And people were like, I don't, you should go right now to Hong Kong and do this race. Like, I don't think it's smart. So I'm like, okay, fine. And then in February, people are like, you shouldn't be traveling. Like, there's a lot going on with COVID. I'm like, no, it's fine. And like, I had friends who did Trans Grand Canary and some of them had problems even coming back. Like, so I'm like, mm. As much as I did want to finish, like, the last two races of the year, of, like, 12 and 12, I'm like, okay, maybe it was a good thing that I didn't. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Uh, like, at the end of the day, like, you have to you have to know what your why is, and then you can endure anyhow. And with that, it's like, if you don't know what your why is, you can't endure. No. And so you need to really take that time for yourself to recuperate mentally physically emotionally to be able to go on and be stronger and you learn lessons about yourself and what you're fully capable of and what like what is your boundary like when right. enough is enough so I mean was that year a learning experience like was it how I turned out definitely not but like I'm also not ashamed of it like so you know, people are like, oh, but you didn't finish this race. You didn't. I'm like, but that's okay. And like, I've always been candid about that. I'm like, it's okay to fall. I'm like, you just need to get up. Like, if you don't fall, you don't learn. If you don't learn, you don't grow. That's right. And that's what's the most important thing. Like, people are so afraid. And like, I see people on social media, they don't want to come forward. And they're like, oh, you know, we DNF'd and they're ashamed of it. But I've always been like, I mean, I always post when I'm crying, when I'm upset, because I think it's important for people to realize that the ultra world isn't only elite athletes. It's like, mm -hmm ordinary people every day doing these things and sometimes you succeed and sometimes you don't but i mean we're human beings like that's we fall right. we get back up we that's fall, right. we get back up like we're resilient right? Right. at the end of the day you have to listen to what's going on inside of you both mentally and physically because at the end of the day you're responsible for your body you have to take ownership of it so if you're feeling off or something's wrong just listen to your intuition and to your instinct mm, right and that's it like it just comes with experience and just getting out there and running and trying. And if you don't succeed, do it again. If you succeed, great. If you fall, Perfect. get back up. That's it. That's great advice because like you said before, you have to see the failure in people yep. to know what is possible because you did not let any of those roadblocks stop you and you're still moving forward and you're still as invigorated about it yeah. as you were going in, which is awesome. Fail your way to success. <clears throat> that's right. <laughs> Baby steps, that's it. So we like to finish our podcast with a little bit of rapid fire questions, if you don't mind, just to have a little fun. So just first thing, first thing that comes into your head. All right, here we go. 80s or 90s music? 90s. Have you lost a toenail from running? Like 200. <laughs> <laughs> My girl. <laughs> Do you have a tattoo? Yes. Uh, your favorite post-race reward? Beer. Beer. My girl. Beer. We need to hang out more. <laughs> I, I was actually near you. I was just in mono yesterday. No way. Yeah. Aw, next time, let us know. Okay. Yeah, so what's worse, a treadmill run or running in minus 20? Outside. <laughs> Minus 20. Minus 20. Okay. Favorite junk food? Oh, I have so many. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, what's the one you found? What's one that you picked up along your, uh, on your tours? Oh, okay. Probably donuts. I really like donuts. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking you going to say something like gelato or something because every country has gelato. <laughs> it's not even that bad. Like, I just, donuts are, I'm so Canadian. Like, donuts have a way to make <laughs> Oh, speaking of Canadian, Ryan Reynolds or Ryan Gosling? Ryan Reynolds. Uh, where haven't you traveled that's, like, number one on your list? And not race-related, just you want to visit that country to explore? Mm, I think it would be... It's a tie between Chile and Antarctica. Oh, wow. I was just going to say, because you've done five continents, right? 
So two more to go, and you're going to be part of this, the uh, Seven Continent Club. That's right. I, my bucket list is to get down to Antarctica secretly to steal a penguin and bring it home. <laughs> <laughs> also, I mean, there is a race down there, which would be really cool, but I just, I don't like the cold. It's just my ulterior motive, take the penguin and put it in my freezer at home. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And finally, say good day, mate, in an Australian accent. Good day, mate. Oh, that's pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> where can we reach you when you get back on social <laughs> for people who want to who, who, for people who want to reach out to you um well there's my website www.whorundtheworld.ca you can contact me there also when i put my social media back on when i'm ready to come back into the social life it is carrots for lunch thank okay. you so much rachel we had a blast you guys are the best. It's so nice to see you, too. <laughs> it only took a year and a half to, to get this podcast up. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. This is awesome, guys. Well, we'll let you know when it's up, and uh, best of luck. Very jelly, but it's good. <laughs> also, we'll have a great weekend. And Ooh, that was quite the marathon. Thanks for listening to the Gotta Run Racing Podcast with your hosts, Norman and Jody. Please visit us at gotterunracing.com for more information on our events or simply drop us an email at gotterunracing at gmail.com.